Hey and welcome to day number 13. Thank you very much for tuning in and as you can already tell from the title and the thumbnail, this video is going to be a little bit different. Let me explain what's going on. Let me explain what happened. So Autodesk rolled out an update for Fusion 360 last week and because I was out of office, it didn't reach my workstation before Sunday evening. And before this, everything runs smoothly but after the update, I'm experiencing some serious issues using Fusion 360. So it's uh, mainly lagging everywhere. Navigation is slow, switching between different designs is slow, drawing sketches is slow, it uses a lot of, um, of system memory and all in all, it's not a very uh, pleasant experience anymore. So in this video, I'm not gonna rant about what's going on but I will try to show you a few ways on how to approach these issues in case you experience them yourselves. Unfortunately, there are not that many possibilities, but I'm gonna show you a few different ways on how to address this problem. So let's get started. Now, let's see if I can demonstrate what's going on here. And for this reason, I have opened a scene that consists of several different components. And as soon as I start orbiting or rotating the model in the viewport, the leg kicks in. So this goes for rotation, for zooming and for panning. And you probably might say that you cannot tell the difference, but I can guarantee when you experience this leg yourself, you can immediately tell that it takes a fraction of a second between the click and the operation to take place. And you also might say that this is probably because of the complexity of the scene. And for this reason, let's switch to a design that is much simpler and here I have the same behavior. It's also visible or noticeable on a simple sketch like this one. And it's not only navigation, it also affects drawing sketch entities and moving these entities around. So it always takes a fraction of a second for the line to follow the cursor and it is even visible on an empty scene. So when you look at the view cube in the right hand upper corner, you can see that it lags as soon as I start rotating in the scene. Now, I'm not sure yet where this problem comes from, but when you are dealing with display issues, it is usually a good idea to go to help, support and diagnostics, graphics diagnostic, then this box appears at the top. You can see what device is currently in use, how much memory is available, what drives the graphic card, what version is installed and when it was installed. And at the bottom, you can limit the effects to optimize performance. And if you check this one, all of the effects are turned off. So there is no anti-aliasing or ambient occlusion anymore. Unfortunately, this does not solve the problem on my end. So I'm gonna disable this feature again and in case you want to know if a new graphic card driver is available you can simply click this button and Fusion redirects you to the website of the fabricator and here it already fills in the name of my graphic card and the operating system and then I can search for the latest driver. Now let's also briefly talk about the ups and downs of cloud-based application and software as a service. So one of the big upsides is that you do not have to worry about your files as they are stored in the cloud, hopefully in a safe place. And in case of Fusion 360, not only your files are stored in the cloud, but also your preferences, your settings and your shortcut keys. So this means that whenever you launch Fusion on a different workstation, when you uh, log in with your credentials, then you have your personal Fusion 360 version available again together with your files. And working with cloud-based applications also means that you usually have uh, some uh, team and network features available that make communication and collaboration with your colleagues, with your uh, co-workers and sometimes also with your clients easy and straightforward. Another big upside is that you always get the latest version. So this means that whenever a new uh, set of features is available, it gets immediately rolled out and installed on your site. And uh, in this uh, case, there is not a 2019 or 2020 or 21 uh, version of Fusion 360. 
available. It's also not necessary to purchase these versions separately because you always get the latest updates. And at the same time, this is also one of the biggest downsides because you cannot prevent Fusion from installing these updates. And this makes it sometimes very difficult to predict if the uh, program is going to work the same way as it did before the update. So usually that's not a big deal, but whenever you are in between different projects, whenever you have to meet tight deadlines and deliver your files to a client, it's never a good idea to mess around with the tools or with the software. So never touch a running system. It's totally fine if you do this when you are done with the jobs, but in between the jobs, it's a big no-go. Always make sure that your equipment is up to date and working before you start a new job. And then after the job is done, you can do some updates or change some things, but in between, it's never a good idea. Another downside of software as a service is that you do not purchase an actual thing, right? So you do not own anything except your files. So this means that you acquire the right to use the application for some time. And after this uh, period runs out, you have to renew your subscription to get access to your files or to manipulate or adjust the source files again. And this also means that you never know uh, what you get. So when you pay a certain amount for a set of tools now, it's not sure that these features will be available for the same price in a year, in two years or in three years. Now, let me show you what I have done to address the current issue. The first step is self-explanatory and almost not worth mentioning. And this is to use Google to search for a solution. So I type in something like Fusion 360 lagging. And on the first page, you will usually find a link to the Autodesk forum. So it's this one here. And in case the post does not answer your question, you can go back to the Fusion 360 category. And here you have several different boards, electronics, manufacturer, support, where many topics are discussed by the community. And it's a good idea to go to the top of the page and type in something in the search bar. So let me try something like slow. And then I search for a post title that describes my problem. Fusion extremely slow after last update. So this one was posted a week ago and it looks like starts normal. For example, circle is lagging very bad. It looks like that other users are experiencing the same or a similar issue, which is a good sign because it means that it's not something that only happens on my end. And under these circumstances, it increases the chances that the people from Autodesk are taking care of it. And if you want to find out what version you are currently using, you can switch back to Fusion 360, go to help about, and here you can find the current version that's installed on your workstation. To start a new post in the Fusion Forum, you have to be registered on the Autodesk website. And before you do so, take you some time, read through the existing threads, because in case other users are experiencing the same issue, then probably a solution was already posted somewhere. And if you are lucky, and if enough people have the same problem, then sometimes also the software engineers from Autodesk reply to your post, they take care. And under these circumstances, it's a good idea to provide them with the information they need for a successful investigation. Now, when it's really urgent, you can go to help, support and diagnostics, get support. This opens up the Autodesk website one more time. Then you can scroll to the bottom of the page, visit support. And here you can choose between different paths. In my case, I would go for the post purchase support and select a topic, choose my product, describe my problem, and then I get prompted with different options like scheduling a call or asking my questions directly to the Autodesk support team. And as far as I know, this is only available when you are a paying customer. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to come up with a solution for the current issue, but I promise that I will keep you posted and I will let you know in the comment section below this video once I find something that solves the problem. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thumbs up if you like the content, subscribe and see you in the next one.